Hey guys, today's topic is introduction to array. In the earlier lectures, we have seen uh, different functionalities available in the C. So today we are going to talk on array. And before we start the discussion on array, we will be discussing why do we need an array storage or an array variable style. So uh, let's see a small program which is student details program. So here I'm trying to store uh, the roll numbers as well as the marks of the students in my class. So what do I need? I need a variable long where I'm storing the roll number because if you, if you are seeing the roll numbers in the university, it has the college code, university code, the branch code and then the roll number. So it has a very large, uh, you know, uh, size. So that is why I'm preferring the long variable and also I'm storing the marks which is an integer and then I'm calling because I'm going to take the values runtime. I'm using the printf statement where I'm writing enter roll number and marks. Then I'm uh, storing the numbers or the values through scanf which is m percent r and m percent m. And then I'm finally printing the values. So this is what I'll be doing in order to store the uh, roll number and the marks. But the problem is what if I want to store or display details of five students so then I would need something like this the same program which we saw earlier will have to do uh, you know instantly uh, calling of roll numbers from r1 to r5 and integer marks m1 to m5 and accordingly print up scanner to store and print those values but what if the students are 50 or 500 like I teach in a university where we have 9000 students so can I write the same program calling the values of 9000 students that's going to be very cumbersome and it's going to be a very tedious program because I would have to write the variable names in such a long range as well as the marks in that long range which is not a suitable idea considering the length of the program plus it's not what optimized coding style is so what do we do so can we actually do this that we create a roll number which is a one single variable storing all the roll numbers. So ultimately calling it as in the roll number as in the single variable which can store multiple values. Yes, that's what I'm saying and that's what the array is. The solution to this problem. When we go back to this, this is one roll number R as in the variable which can store the multiple values. So from 25 to 2 it is storing all the values within the same variable which is R and that is known as an array in a C programming language. So array is what? Array is a fixed size sequence collection of elements of the same data type. And again I stress on a few words those who are using this for preparation of exam or are going to learn the programming need to understand that it's a fixed size so we declare it runtime or the compile time. It is sequence collection. So basically it is contiguous allocation of memory and it's of the same data type. So if you want multiple data types, we'll see different options in the future. But array is specifically for the same data type. Also a variable which can store multiple data of the same type. That is also an array. So if you are preparing for the exam, both of the definitions can be used simultaneously or in the either or cases. So how does the memory allocation happen? In the earlier videos we have seen that memory allocation occupies certain amount of storage on the memory. Whereas in array it is like this when we are declaring integer x. So there is a location which is given that memory and the name x. Whatever the value we are assigning is stored in that memory location but in terms of array right when we are doing it it's not the same case so here you can see whenever there is an integer x the location is specified there's a value assigned which is 25 and then we perform a operation which is x is equal to x plus 2 it will add up 2 into the value which is stored in the x and store it in the same place which is x but in case of uh, array it is something like this so we are declaring an array x of the size 5 then we would have storage occupied in a, this similar way as you can see on the screen. 
and it will all be continuous allocation. But we cannot assign value like this like we are doing earlier. It is a wrong method. For a very simple reason, now x has five location within it. So we'll have to name those location using some other way which is like this. So it is x of 0 the first variable, x of 1 the second variable and so on. Uh, sorry, not the variable but the storage location within the same variable. And we can call the values as in x of 0, x of 1 and so on. So let's see an example. That means if we have x of 2 is equal to 9, we will be storing the value 9 in x of 2. Pause the video and understand this one simple thing guys that uh, you need to create a program parallel with this in order to understand and use this thing. Also one important thing which I want to mention in here is that the array will always start a storage from 0. So the first element will be 0th element. So in case you have the 5 variables, a uh, 5 size uh, array then it will be the 0 to 4 instead of 1 to 4 because array always starts from 0th element. So when we are doing this, uh, the next operation, here we are doing x of 2 plus 5. So the value of x of 2 is 9 plus 5 is 14 and we are storing it in the x of 0th location. So this is how the arrays work and then we can uh, store the values as well using the statement scanner, using the ampersand x, but specifying which element of the array. And that is what we are given the runtime 87 value. So that is what it is stored. And then we can use print a statement to print the values. So here the answer will be 14 because x sub 0 is 14. Now let's do the same program which we discussed at the starting of the lecture, student details program using an array. So the same program will turn into this. So we have two variables, uh, long, which is r, that is the roll number, integer m, which is again the size of 50, because we have got 50 students in the class. Now I will request you to pause the video, try the further action by yourself to scan and store the values, and then get back to it. All right, guys. So I hope that you have tried this, and let's see the. The program which we saw earlier had the similar declaration but the difference here is in order to have 50 values we won't be able to uh, write or it is not suitable to write 50 printf scanner. So this is a cumbersome process and again ultimately not an optimized way of coding. So what we will do is in order to replace those 50 scanner we will be using a loop in here. So we use a variable i which is our looping variable. In earlier lectures you already seen how to use the loops. So we'll be calling a loop of 0 to 50 which is for i is equal to 0 to i less than 50 that means it will run from 0th to 49 which is total number size 50 and every time there will be increment of 1 which is i plus plus. And the loop will scan the values from R of i and M of i and will store the values. Similarly, in order to print those values, we need to have one more loop, which is for printing. You can also do it while in the same loop, but it will store the values and it will print the values taking a longer period of time. You can try the both ways of writing the program, printing and scanning in the same loop and in the different loop and in the comment section you can tell if there is any problem which you would have faced. So this is how you will be using an array to replace the multiple printf scanner and you can store multiple values of the same type within the same variable. So this is the program which you need to try by yourself. That is it for the array. For any doubts, any queries you can always comment in the comment section or you can uh, visit our Instagram page and comment there. Also, please tell us if you have any feedback for our lectures. Please like, share and subscribe our channel. Thank you so much. Have a great day.